Hey everyone, it's Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're breaking down strokes, what they are, why they happen, and how to remember the signs when it really matters. And here's the best part. We got three study guides to help this knowledge actually stick. So all of our members, be sure to grab yours and follow along. Let's lock it in. Strokes, also called a CVA, is what happens when the brain lacks oxygen typically due to a clot in a blood vessel, which cuts off oxygen supply to the brain. So just like any organ without oxygen, the brain begins to die. But strokes can also be caused by narrowed blood vessel, which decreases oxygen delivery to the brain, like in atherosclerosis, or even sudden rupture of a vessel in the brain known as an aneurysm. Either way, the brain lacks oxygen and tissues die. Now for the type of strokes, we have TIA, known as a transient ischemic attack, which I remember TIA as a tiny stroke, since we have a tiny lack of oxygen. Now, breaking down the medical terminology, transient means lasting only a short time, ischemic means a lack of oxygen, and attack means it happens suddenly. But TIAs come and go and often resolve by themselves. Now the other types of strokes are more permanent, so a CVA, a cerebral vascular accident, just think CVAs are more serious. We have no oxygen, which means long-term permanent damage. Now there are two types of CVAs. Ischemic, meaning that low oxygen, typically from a blood clot that cuts off oxygen supply, also called embolic or thrombotic stroke, and a hemorrhagic stroke, like an aneurysm. So bleeding from a ruptured blood vessel, resulting in high risk for increased ICP. Now, the number one risk factor and cause to know for the NCLEX and nursing exams, write this down, is hypertension, over 140 systolic. This one was stressed as the single most important risk factor to prevent a stroke. So the key term for prevention was to instruct the patient to take their antihypertensive medications regularly. Since the stroke risk can be decreased by up to 50% when hypertension is controlled. So Hesse mentions the highest risk for a stroke was that hypertension over 140 systolic. And Kaplan says that hypertension was the highest risk factor for a CVA. Well, why though? Well, think of the patho here. Uncontrolled hypertension pounds those little blood vessels inside the brain, stretching them out and making them very fragile. Now, a tricky NCLEX question for a client recovering from a stroke with hypertension over 200 systolic, the intervention was to keep the systolic blood pressure over 170 for the first 24 to 48 hours. This makes sure we lower the pressure slowly, sort of like landing a plane. We land it slow and smooth, no big drops. This prevents us from crashing into hypotension. So remember, we need to land that plane slow and steady. Now for the other causes that weren't really tested, smoking scars the blood vessels, making them weak. Hyperlipidemia, that high cholesterol, adds fatty buildup underneath those scarred vessels to form plaque. And uncontrolled diabetes, we get very thick syrupy blood, which puts loads of pressure on the blood vessels and over time destroys the whole body. And even increased risk for clots, like in clients with atrial fibrillation and even heart valve malfunctions where blood can sort of swirl around the heart, resulting in clots that can eventually travel to the brain. Now for the key signs and symptoms, the most tested key term on five different question banks was, write this down, hemiparesis or unilateral weakness, that one-sided weakness that was new or sudden with key term arm drift. Guys, write that down. These key terms came up 90% of the time. So if you see these terms, new or sudden, or even one-sided weakness, or even arm drift, you have to assume that it's a stroke, and we have to notify the provider immediately. So for quick assessment, we use the popular acronym FAST, since acting fast saves lives. So F for facial and smile drooping, A for arm drift, that one-sided weakness, S for speech impairment from the mouth and tongue, and then T for time, we have to call 911 and get a CT scan immediately for any of these signs and symptoms. Since this is known as the golden hour, we only have one hour to seek medical attention due to the lack of oxygen supply to the brain. Remember, time is brain. 
Now, for hemorrhagic strokes, that ruptured cerebral aneurysm, we get a key sign for severe headache. Now, this is very different than any other type of headache. It's way worse than migraines. Some clients even say that it's the worst headache of their life. Often called the silent killers because a small bleed can go undetected for years before a major rupture without warning. Pulling from our over 4,000 NCLEX questions in our nursing school and NCLEX memberships, here's a common NCLEX question. The most concerning patient statement with diplopia and new weakness and onset of vomiting without nausea, I have the worst headache of my life. The key term there is worst headache. Since blood is filling up that brain, causing massive increased ICP. Now, since strokes affect one side of the body, a left brain stroke will affect the right side of the body and vice versa. A right-sided stroke will affect the left side of the body. So to help you remember this, just think of an X coming out of the brain and pointing down to the opposite sides of the body. So write this down. Left brain controls the L's, language and logic. So we see dysphagia, difficulty speaking. So just think the S in dysphagia, S for speech. And we get reading and writing problems. And we get right-sided hemiparesis, that one-sided weakness, resulting in right-sided neglect, basically ignoring that side of the body due to the half vision from visual deficits. And on the other side, the right brain, think of the R's, reckless and really creative. So we get lack of impulse control and behavioral changes, as well as left hemiparesis, that one-sided weakness on the left side, leading to left-sided neglect from ignoring that body due to the half vision. Now, a common NCLEX question is teaching for families of patients with right-sided brain injury. So remember, R for right side, R for reckless. So the correct answer is always lack of impulse control and behavior. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.